Welcome back to RLCS Overtime, and back by from what I assume to be unpopular demand, this is the breakdown. So what I'm going to start doing with these segments is I want to start picking unique teams and unique players every week that I do this to try and showcase and show you what makes certain players particularly good in certain skills, uniquely to others, as well as whole teams and how they play. But this week I'm going to start off with a team that I don't think catches anybody off guard, Gale Force Esports. They've been on an absolute tear in Europe, destroying everybody, coming second place in X Games, falling shy or falling short just by the North American champions, NRG. So I just want to be able to show you guys what makes them so good and the kinds of plays they can execute. So the play I'm going to show you today is a lot of hard clears and a lot of follow-ups and a lot of just long pressure that eventually slowly breaks down Envious, which make up two-thirds of the reigning world champions. But a skill they have that I think almost every pro team has now, and I'm going to take this time to kind of show you how it works, is moving from defense to offense effectively and efficiently. So right now, Kedap has an opportunity to hit this ball and potentially have Violent Panda follow it up. But he doesn't have a great touch and he has Maestro potentially coming down his throat and he knows that behind him is Turbo Pulsa. And if we've learned anything about him, he's a fantastic defender. So he's gonna opt to go past this ball and Violent Panda's gonna start to cheat up to get ready for a pass from his defender and net. So we're gonna watch Kedap just whiz right on by and trust Turbo Pulsa and you'll even slow down and get ready to go back to net just in case everything goes to hell and nothing happens. Turbo is gonna work with his teammate over here to try and keep that pressure on. Envious are gonna get a lot of good counter clears. And in this section that I'm showing you of this play, I think there's a lot of good plays on both sides, but just watching how Gale Force deals with it, I think is really phenomenal. So another hard clear again, forcing more boost to get used, more chase down from Envious. Even here, again, another defender trying to come through, a shot from a player on Envious, and here's another opportunity that they're faced with. Violent Panda in net has two choices. He can either try and drop it back to the corner, and then let his teammate KDOP come and follow this up, or he can try and go for hard clear. But if he's going to do so, he has to try and figure out where's that hard clear gonna be. So he actually opts to shoot behind Maestro. There's nobody back there. That entire corner of the pitch is completely void of all envious players, and he knows that from there, KDOP will be able to follow suit. So as it's clear comes through, Maestro tries to turn around, grab some boost on the way, and Devo's getting postured up to get for a hard clear. But look what happens. More continued pressure. KDOP is going to try and come in, and hit this ball and just force Devo into a tight spot. Now Devo only has two choices. He can either hit it off to the side and bounce it off, or he can try and come around for the weaker touch, get this side of the ball, and try and drop it more towards the front of the net. I'm just gonna John Madden this up. Maestro is gonna come back. Maybe somebody's gonna come follow it through and then and then come Ariel over here. All right, <laughs> anyways. So Kedap puts the pressure on Devo, who, tries to, who ends up getting the weak touch in confidently, but it's not very strong. Another hard clear from, per from Turbo Pulsa pushing it up, and this is where Envious tries to see an opportunity. Like, hey, we'll turn this around on them really quick and get a nice shot. Devo could have potentially gone for his signature double touch off the backboard, but it didn't go according to plan. Now again, two players coming up for this. Envious, Devo was in the corner. I think it was Ramco that came off the side. Now look where he is. Look at this, look at him. He's got no momentum. His wheels are not touching any surface. The only way he's gonna get control of his car is to boost straight back to the ground. He's got no momentum in his favor. You can't see him, but Devo's all the way off screen over here on the side for the boost, and Maestro now left all alone. Kadop has an option. Kadop knows he needs to follow through with this. If he just gets one hard touch, Maestro can either pinch it off the sidewall, gain control and dribble it, or use the momentum to try and pop it up high and buy time for his teammates. Kadop knows that if he follows this behind, that Turbo will come and follow through, Turbo in the third position, and they can spread out fan on poor, lonely, sad Maestro in his nice Grokin car, which we did finally find out they were doing an homage to Grokin. And now again, you can see what the pressure does. He followed through, Kedop making sure that Maestro had no momentum to clear it out, and Turbo Pulsa would seal it through. This is just a good, almost minute stint of Gale Force Esports getting hard clears, great positioning, and slowly and meticulously breaking down Envious from a distance. Usually you see that up close, but this time they were able to do it from even their half the field, just putting it in good positions, forcing boost to be used, and eventually catching them all out of position. Now, it's just my opinion, but I personally think that Gale Force Esports is a team to watch, and they're a team right now that's gunning for the top. Now, the next team I want to talk about, I think, has earned the entire North American fan base, and they've gotten them behind them. They've got all the heart in them, Rogue. I really like what Rogue has done, and I think it's a little bit hard to sometimes see what they can do in the grand scheme of things, but what I want to show you are their passing plays, their individual passing plays, are some of the best. You know that I've always pulled for them. The Matt and Sizz duo are a duo I adore watching. But just watching how these three players are always seeking each other out in the perfect moment and always opting to pass instead of shoot, I think it's phenomenal and something you can look forward to seeing, especially in this upcoming dream hack. So right now, Matt is posed with two decisions. He's coming off the back wall. He has no one pressuring him. Siki's on the ground. No one is following that through. If he wants to, he can get a hard clear and Sizz can follow it up. But Sizz is facing towards the net. He doesn't have a lot of uh, area to turn around real quick. 
So what he opts to do instead is drop this straight down, knowing Sizz is there, and knowing Siki's actually ready for the clear. He's, he's expecting Matt since he has all the time in the world to go up and hit this hard. So instead he's gonna drop this down and Sizz is going to beat it out. And Sizz is gonna go for a nice pinch. He knows that Siki's on the wall to follow that through. He pinches it off that side. And we're gonna see everyone start to follow up. We're gonna see a hit over towards the top. Turtle over to Sizz, and I don't know if you could tell, but Sizz barely got that just before Snasky was able to follow through. Snasky did not get a touch on that. And again, here it is. You'll see Siki in net trying to come contest this. He has a lot of room. So when you're the only defender back, your, your job is to either cut off angles or buy time for your team. Now he doesn't have a lot of time to buy time for his team because Turtle's coming in for this shot. So what he wants to do is he wants to cut off as much angle as possible. If he comes in from the side, essentially Turtle is going to have to either shoot it like far left post, which Siki will probably shut down, or far top right. Not a lot because Siki's going to body block that. And, and Turtle, while he is definitely at the skill level to pull off that shot, he's going for the safer route. He's actually gonna hit it right past Siki toward the backboard, knowing he was last defender, giving the play over to Matt, who is definitely not going to miss a shot like that. These are the kind of plays that they execute that I've always been in love with, and I think that their selfless play and always looking for each other, that touch from Siz, I still can't get over it. Just getting there before Snasky got even a touch on it. His car didn't come anywhere near that ball. What I'm really liking from them, though, is seeing that they're able to constantly look for each other, back-to-back, play-by-play. So the next two I'm going to show you are very similar plays, just to showcase a little bit of what they're capable of and how frequently they do it. We'll see a lot of teams with passing plays like this once in a while, but Rogue does it constantly. Game after game, we'll see them do more and more passing plays. You can even watch here. Sis is going to try and go for the pass. The first thing he's thinking about, he's not thinking about the shot. He sees Matt down here. You saw I just changed the cameras from Turtle, who's in the middle of the field. Matt is here getting ready for the shot. He's got this whole net at his side. Devo is completely planted, so Matt knows he has a chance to beat him out. All Sizz sees is Matt. He wants to drop this down anywhere in front of this net. He knows Matt can get it. Sizz is always looking for that pass and rarely looking to try and carry it through the shot. Now, Remco's going to get in the way, so he's not going to be able to get as much of a touch, but he'll hit it out to the side. Now, if you notice, Turtle was in the middle. He's there again to contest that. Sizz just one more time realizes, like, hey, you know what? I think I can get one more pass off. Now, you'll notice he turns off ball cam. Now, if he had ball cam on, his camera would be up looking at the ball, and he have no idea where his contesting defender is. But now he knows exactly where Devo is. He can keep him in the corner of his eye. This touch doesn't need to be very accurate. It just needs to go anywhere in front of that net. It just needs to be pretty much, I mean, anywhere here. Anywhere. Anywhere in front of him, and someone's going to come seal the deal. So that's exactly what he does. He pops it just over Devo. Again, not looking for the goal, not looking for the shot. And then Matt is there to beat out just one more defender because he has been their striker. And I really like seeing him shine because originally Turtle had a name for himself. Sizz and Matt hadn't worked as well together on the roster that they were on previously to this, but now they all seem to be shining. And just one more play again. This passing play is a little more unique and a little more particular, a little more flashy, I could say. So Sizz comes off the backboard, you can't tell, but he runs out of boost just before that front flip. He's got nothing left. This is where him and Turtle are going to communicate together. Turtle's going to gain control, but Sizz wants to keep that pressure up. Because Turbo understands that if it's only Turtle, he can probably save it. But if it's Turtle and Sizz, there's not much he can do about it. Turtle, so he, he went to go push this shot towards Turbo Pulsa, and he was confident that he had it. But instead, he gets to the other side of the ball and slows it down instead of taking a shot for the corner. Turbo didn't really have many options. He had to try and stop that as quickly as he could. And if he wasn't able to, it was just going to be a shot follow up by Sizz. So they legitimately cornered Turbo into having no choice but to get scored on. So that's just a taste of what you're going to see a lot of these teams bringing coming up to DreamHacks, bringing Season 4 Qualifier as well. And I'm pretty stoked to see it. But don't worry, we got some cool stuff when we come right back.